Welcome to Walking with Jesus' Authority. Uh, tonight is episode 9. I'm hoping that you really enjoy so far. Tonight we want to talk about Matthew chapter 6, verse 5 through 15. My friend, this is a really important, very important one, okay? This is called the model prayer in the King James Version. And the reason that is, is because um, they asked Jesus how to pray. And this is what he told them. Tonight's going to be a little bit different. We're going to, I'll read it first in the New King James Version. And then I'm going to follow it up with reading it in the Passion Translation. And you'll see when I switch the reason why switch. It, it, it'll make sense to you because you'll see that the Passion Translation is more basic to help you understand. And if you're a young Christian, this will help you really get your feet wet in understanding. Because this is an important part. They asked Jesus, hey, how do we pray? So we start off in chapter 5, or I'm, um, yeah, correction on that, all right? Chapter 6, verse 5, and it says, And when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the street, that they may be seen by men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward, okay? Same kind of Sounds kind of sensible, but then we look at the word hypocrite. It's a person who indulges in hypocrisy. So what's hypocrisy? The practice of claiming to have a moral standard or belief to which one's own behavior doesn't even conform. It's like the say as I say, not as I do type mentality that we tend to see a lot of times in society today. You know, people will tell you, hey, uh, Go, go mow that lawn and, and don't wear shorts and don't cuss. And then you, they come out as you're mowing the lawn and they're cussing and they're wearing the shorts. And you're like, oh, I thought we weren't supposed to wear shorts. And uh, <laughs> and he's like, hey, 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 don't you judge me. Don't you, don't, no, no, you work for me. You do as I do. You do as I say, not as I do. So we look at the... Um, Passion Translation. It says things a little bit different. Here it goes. Verse 5. Whenever you pray, be sincere and not like the pretenders who love the attention they receive while praying before others in the meetings and on the street corners. Believe me, they have already received their reward. It's a lot. Of pretender, someone who's faking. Okay? Kind of like hits home for a lot of people. I'm like, oh, he's calling me a faker. But that's how it is. That's, that's, I want you to understand that and grasp that. Six says, but you, and we're in the New King James, but you, when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut your door, pray to, the, to your Father who is in the secret place, and your Father who sees in secret, will reward you openly. So, you know, you can be in church and be the first person up in front going, ah, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, and uh, be a sinner when you're out of that place. But you're supposed to pray in secret. God already knows what you want, what you need. You're not coming up with something new. He already knows. So, in the Passion Translation, kind of goes like this but whenever you pray go into your innermost chamber and be alone with father god praying to him in secret and your father who sees all that you do will reward you openly god's going to reward you he's not looking for someone to um fill or check a box or or make people think there's something they're not Okay? God wants you to be honest. 
But when you pray, he wants you to pray to him, not so other people can see. Because truly, there's worldly people that go, oh my gosh, did you hear Brother Dale pray yesterday? Oh, he was so in touch with God, I could, I could almost feel God's presence there. Almost. No, pray in secret. You owe the Father what his word says. Okay, so let's go to verse 7. Verse 7 says, And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do. For they think that they will be heard for their many words. Now let's jump into the Passion Translation. And it says, When you pray, there is no need to repeat empty phrases. Praying like the Gentiles do. For they expect God to hear them because of their many words. Now a heathen is a person who does not belong to a widely held religion is what the definition is uh, really it, it can you could be in a religion and be a heathen because you're the way that you if you pray the same prayer all the time then what are you really praying for God wants to hear what's in here it's important that we give him what's in here it's very important and when he hears that he hears the sincerity of your heart and that's what he goes with that's why it's so important that we pray from the heart okay verse 8 says therefore do not be like them for your father knows the things you need have need of before you ask him passion translation says there is no need to imitate them since your father already knows what you need before you ask him and just remember that God wants you to ask but he already knows okay he already knows you're not coming up with some new thing and you're like God it just fell on my heart he already knows so just ask him verse 9 says in this manner Therefore, pray. And this is the prayer that he gave them. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. The Passion Translation says it this way. Pray like this, our beloved Father. Dwelling in the heavenly realms, may the glory of your name be the center on which our lives turn. My friend, that's pretty deep. You know, when you think about it, you're like, wow, that's deep. But your father, God already knows who he is, okay? But if any way you pray to him, if you're showing your respect to him, if you're showing the love for him, he sees it, he hears it, he knows. You know, people think they have to have this repetition or, or this word that's going to make God hear them better. But it's not what it's about. He just wants to hear. Now verse 10, New King James says, Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. We go to the Passion Translation. It says, Manifest your kingdom realm, clear or obvious to the eye or mind, and cause your every purpose to be fulfilled on earth just as it is in heaven. So, in, in this aromatic that we talked about before, when they, they're they telling you that the translation they get out of it is manifest your kingdom realm and cause every purpose to be filled on earth just that is as in heaven. It's the same thing, okay? Just a little bit different. And some people will hear it and some people go, I like that. That kind of rings true to me. And, and it sets in my heart. And that's good. That's what we want. All right. So now we go to verse 11 says, Give us this day our daily bread. Now we know bread is food. Okay. So what are we talking about? Let's see what the Passion Translation says. It says, We acknowledge you as our provider of all we need each day. 
See, God didn't promise you to be rich. He didn't say you'd have all this money. Um, food would fall like in Egypt. It would fall down from heaven and fall in your house, okay? He, he never said that, okay? But he meets your needs. And, and if you got food on your table, my friend, if you have something to drink, even water, he's already met your needs. Anything else above that is, is a plus. And we shouldn't take it for granted. We should never take it for granted. And verse 12 says, Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Hard one, people. <laughs> this is a hard one. A lot of people can't do it. It's too much for them. They want to. They truly want to. They, they believe they can but in reality, they can't. And they can't because when somebody owes you, you automatically say, I want my money, okay? And you might even um, send them letters, maybe you get a lawyer, I don't know. Um, but when you forgive someone of their debts, you're walking in line with God. And then any debts that you have, God will also, he'll also forgive you of them. How awesome is that? You know? And, and we miss this as believers. We, we truly, we don't want to be offensive to the Lord. But if we forgive others, and we talked about this before. If we forgive others, just as God forgives us, then we're walking with Christ. We're walking in the authority, in Jesus' authority, because that's what he did. Okay? So now we come into 13. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me read the Passion Translation for 12 real quick. Forgive us the wrongs we have done as we ourselves release forgiveness to those we have wronged. Forgive those who wronged us. See, forgiveness is hard for people. The Bible covers it so much, so deep. If you harbor hate and then, or unforgiveness unforgiveness is probably the biggest if you harbor that against somebody and then it comes time and you're like well you know what can i do to make things better for me and someone who um you've not forgiven and you ask them for something and they know they've wronged you and they know you know they wronged you. But you haven't forgiven them. You're going to go back. They can treat you any way they want. Who's going to say? But if you forgive them and then you go back and you ask for something, they're going to be looking at you going, huh? Because they, when you forgive someone of something, my friend, they, there's nothing they can do, okay? They can't even argue with you. What are you going to argue? Why did you forgive me? They won't argue, I promise. Now we come to 13. New King James says, And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. When we go to the Passion Translation, it says, Rescue us every time we face tribulation and set us free from evil. For you are the king who rules with power and glory forever. Amen. See, anytime you run into temptation, God's going to give you a way out. The choice will be yours if you take it or not. If it's a sexual sin, Say you're sitting at home just like I'm sitting here right now in front of this computer and I have a problem with pornography and 
the little thing flashes up. I can either just close it. I can open it. You find as you walk with God that when this happens, he's going to lead you to just close it. Okay? You may even look at it with disgust and go, really? That's it? That's the temptation. And when you're walking with God and you're praying every night to, that he'd show you that he grow within you, that when the enemy comes against you, that you're not going to fall to that temptation. You won't do it. It's the same with drugs. It's the same with alcohol. If you, if you have a problem with alcohol, and you say, well, you know, I've been trying to get under control. I went to a party last week, and I fell. I mean, everybody's drinking now. I just fell. Of course you're going to fall. The temptation's right in your face. When you get invited to those parties, just kindly bow out. Yeah, I can't really go. I'm sorry. I have other things I need to take care of. And that's your mental health, your personal health. If those people get mad at you, it doesn't matter anyway. Okay? It doesn't matter. If they're truly your friend, they'll always be your friend. And if they're truly a close friend, they'll already know the struggle. So you're not telling them anything new, okay? They already know. So it's important. God will help us. He doesn't lead us in temptation. He says in his word that where there's temptation, he will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. I know a lot of you are sitting out there going, well, I can't bear anything. <laughs> uh, well, God's going to show you how. But when you have that victory, I'm telling you, that victory blows it all away. <laughs> you can't, you can look at it and go, well, I have the victory. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. Now, our last two verses are together. I left them together. I thought it just made more sense. 14 and 15 in the New King James. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. We go to the Passion Translation. And when you pray, make sure you forgive the faults of others so that your Father in heaven will also forgive you. But if you withhold forgiveness from others, your Father withholds forgiveness from you. I want to tell you, that is one thing that uh, someone who is a believer who, who is trying to go forward, they can't understand. Hey, how come I can't go forward? What keeps stopping me? From going forward I like to call it a self check when you sit down and you look at yourself and you start looking at forgiveness you start looking at have I forgive this person did I forgive my mother and father did I forgive this or that or my ex-wife or anything like that when you forgive God forgives you okay he forgives you he wants to forgive you. It's his desire. He so much wants to forgive you. But he's not going to beg you to forgive. His word is true. We know that his word is solid. If you don't forgive, it just says right there, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. You can't even ask him. So I, I think truly a lot of what I want you to take out of this, the way Jesus told him to pray. I say this prayer every day, sometimes twice. It doesn't make me a better Christian. 
certainly reminds me who's in charge. Okay? And we should always have a morning prayer, an evening prayer, stuff that um, gets us in line with God first thing in the morning. That when we get up, we're already walking with Him, okay? It's very important. Very, very important. Now, next week we'll pick off on, we'll pick up on Matthew 6, verses uh, 16, and I can't remember off the top of my head, I meant to write it down, but uh, sometimes I get a little old, time to forget a little thing. But I hope this really helped you out. I hope this helps you. And my main point of this, and we'll, Thinking of it right now, I can thank the Holy Spirit that he wants me to tell you. Start with forgiveness and love. God loves you. It's not his desire that not one person go to hell. His desire is we all are with him. But we have choices to make. And sometimes these choices aren't in favor of others. Sometimes people will get upset. Don't let that drive you, man. Don't let that drive you, okay? Father God, as we close today, I just ask that you touch their hearts, that this forgiveness, this prayer would be something they would consider to do every day, to remind themselves, Father, what we're supposed to be, what we're supposed to do. And Father, that they would forgive those who have done wrong to them. And by doing so, you've already forgiven them. We thank you, Father God, in Jesus' name. Amen. If you get a chance, check out um, on Facebook, uh, under Dale Corey, I believe is what it is. Check out under there. I'm teaching a series this month, and yes, I'm going to use this to plug it, okay? And last week I talked about the, the series is called Defeating Evil. Something got laid upon my heart a couple years ago. It's always done during this time. I, sometimes I change it up a little bit on what, a, how deep I go into it. Um, last week we did Generational Curses live. This Saturday, live at 6.30, it will be Word Curses, What You Say Matters. Come join us. I truly, you'll be blessed by it. You will be blessed by it. Just thank you. God bless. We'll see you next time.